Welcome to the Capital News. I am your host, Alex Caritas. Today is Friday, May 8th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. The title of today's podcast, An Historic Jobs Report. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the time to read in its entirety the jobs report that was produced this morning from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, bls.gov. You can most definitely find it there, but I am going to take the time to read the whole thing because this is truly an historic jobs report. We've been saying it here for months that we are going through a very, very historic moment. This is history in the making, so I want to make sure that the audience can fully grasp what is going on here. Take the time to read this yourself. Again, bls.gov. First to market performance. The worse the news, the better the markets. Dow Jones up 1.9%, S&P 500 up 1.7%, NASDAQ 100 up 1.3%. Japanese markets ended up 2.56% up. Across the pond in Europe, UK markets were up 1.4%, Germany was up 1.3%, France was up about one and a quarter. Italy and Spain were both up about three quarters of 1%. On the commodity front, crude oil rallied. We got WTI at $24.66 a barrel. Brent, $30.85 a barrel. Natural gas did pull back, now trading at $1.82 per million British thermal units. Gold pulled back slightly, $1,698 an ounce. Silver is at $15.37 an ounce. Meanwhile, Uncle Sam's 10-year treasury note is yielding 0.67%. So, the markets love terrible news. The worse it is, the better they do. That's the situation we find ourselves in. Depression-level data doesn't make a difference. In fact, they love it. And they love it so much, we now have futures contracts when it comes to the federal funds rate uh, entering negative territory. Now, this is no surprise to us here at the Capital News, nor to this audience. We've been talking about negative rates being here on a real basis for quite a while. It's just a matter of time until we actually see that negative number in front of it. Will the markets lead the Federal Reserve by the nose? The answer is yes, because that's exactly what they have been doing for the past three years, especially since the fourth quarter of 2018. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And we've been living with the consequences of this monstrosity, of this fraud, for a very long time. It's just been at warp speed. It's been pedal to the metal ever since. And now we have a great, great excuse for these people, policymakers, politicians, central bankers. They have a fantastic excuse to get away with murder, to get away with their financial and economic coup d'etat. A virus that came out of nowhere. Nobody could have seen this coming. There's no way we could have prepared for it. And now it justifies the unjustifiable with printing trillions and trillions of dollars, which of course no government has. We don't have it. Our states are broke. Our broke states are going to our broke federal government asking for money, and we got to go to the Federal Reserve. They don't have it either, but they got a printing press. That's called a banana republic, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure that's what everybody voted for. So here we go. This is the employment situation for April 2020. Total non farm payroll employment fell by 20.5 million in April. And the unemployment rate rose to 14.7%. So that would be the headline U3 number, 14.7%. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported today. The changes in these numbers reflect the effects of the coronavirus pandemic and efforts to contain it. Employment fell sharply in all major industry sectors, with particularly heavy job losses in leisure and hospitality. This news release presents statistics from two monthly surveys. The household survey measures labor force status, including unemployment by demographic character characteristics. The establishment survey measures non-farm employment, hours, and earnings by industry. For more information, you can go to some other things within the BLS. Household survey data. In April, the unemployment rate increased by 10.3 percentage points to 14.7%. This is the highest rate and the largest over-the-month increase in the history of the series. Seasonally adjusted data are available back to January of 1948. This is historic. 
the number of unemployed persons rose by 15.9 million to 23.1 million in the month of April. The sharp increases in these measures reflect the effects of the coronavirus pandemic and efforts to contain it. In April, unemployment rates rose sharply among all major work groups. The rate was 13% for adult men, 15.5% for adult women, 31.9% for teenagers, 14.2% for whites, 16.7% for blacks, 14.5% for Asians, and 18.9% for Hispanics. The rates for all of these groups, with the exception of blacks, represented record highs for their respective series. Again, historic. The number of unemployed persons who reported being on temporary layoff increased about tenfold, tenfold to 18.1 million in the month of April. The number of permanent job losers increased by 544,000 to 2 million. In April, the number of unemployed persons who were jobless less than five weeks increased by 10.7 million to 14.3 million, accounting for almost two-thirds of the unemployed. The number of unemployed persons who were jobless five to 14 weeks rose by 5.2 million to 7 million even. The number of long-term unemployed those jobless for 27 weeks or more at 939,000 declined by 225,000 over the month and represented 4.1% of the unemployed. The labor force participation rate decreased by 2.5 percentage points over the month to 60.2%, the lowest rate since January of 1973 when it was at 60% even again history. Total employment as measured by the household survey fell by 22.4 million to 133.4. The employment population ratio at 51.3 percent dropped by 8.7 percentage points over the month. This is the lowest rate and the largest over the month decline in the history of the series. Seasonally adjusted data are available back to January of 1948. So here are a couple other statistics that they threw in here. The labor force participation rate, which we will talk about here on this podcast. We are, you're familiar with it. And also the employment population ratio. We cover these types of things on this podcast. You will rarely hear them on the financial media. Now, analysts will talk about them. Sometimes the news anchors will bring it up too. But this is looking at all of the data, not just the U3 headline. This is looking underneath the hood and really looking at other stressors in the employment market. So that's why you also have to focus on the labor force participation and the employment population ratio, which is, of course, in this report. Okay, The number of persons who usually work full-time declined by 15 million over the month. And the number who usually work part-time declined by 7.4 million. Part-time workers accounted for one-third of the -the over-the-month employment decline. The number of persons at work for part-time work part-time for economic reasons nearly doubled over the month to 10.9 million. These individuals who would have preferred full-time employment were working part-time because their hours had been reduced or they were unable to find full-time jobs. This group includes persons who usually work full-time and persons who usually work part-time. The number of persons not in the labor force who currently want a job at 9.9 million nearly doubled in the month of April. These individuals were not counted as unemployed because they were not actively looking for work during the last four weeks or were unavailable to take a job. Persons marginally attached to the labor force, a subset of persons not in the labor force who currently want a job, numbered 2.3 million in the month of April, up by 855,000 over the month. These individuals were not in the labor force, wanted and were available for work, and had looked for a job sometime in the prior 12 months, but had not looked for work in the four weeks preceding the survey. Discouraged workers, a subset of the marginally attached who believed that no jobs were available for them, numbered 574,000 in April. Little changed from the previous month. So if you take in these broader measures, again, headline is U3, that's 14.7%. If you look at U6, which is the broadest measure, 
It's at 22.8%. 22.8%. Remember, in the depths of the Great Depression in the 1930s, unemployment peaked at 24.9%. Okay? That's how bad this is. Now we move on to the establishment survey data. Some of these numbers will be repetitive, but nonetheless, I want to give the full picture because this is an historic report. So that, again, this is the establishment survey data. Total non-farm payroll employment fell by 20.5 million in the month of April after declining by 870,000 in the month of March. The April over the month decline is the largest in the history of the series and brought employment to its lowest level since February of 2011. The series dates back to 1939. Job losses in April were widespread with the largest employment decline occurring in leisure and hospitality. In April, employment in leisure and hospitality plummeted by 7.7 .7 million, or 47 percent. Almost three-quarters of the decrease occurred in food services and drinking places, down 5.5 million. Employment also fell in the arts, entertainment, and recreation industry, down 1.3 million, and in the accommodation industry, down 839,000. Employment declined by 2.5 million in education and health services in the month of April. In healthcare, employment declined by 1.4 million, led by losses in offices of dentists, down 503,000, offices of physicians, down 243,000, and offices of other healthcare practitioners, down 205,000. So dentists are going to get hit, uh, and this is not surprising because. You're, you're close to somebody's mouth, right? you got all these tools, all these drills. It's aerosol. That's how this virus can be transmitted. People's saliva spewing into the air because you got all these drills flowing around. You know what it's like being in that chair. So front and center are going to be dentists. So it's going to be very interesting to see how those offices are able to open back up. Employment also declined in social assistance, down 651,000, reflecting job losses in child daycare services, down 336,000, and individual and family services, down 241,000. Employment in private education declined by 457,000 over the month. This is also another very interesting one as far as I'm concerned when it comes to child daycare services, right? How many parents, I mean, child, child care is, is expensive to begin with. I mean, I know a lot of couples, you know, it's as if one of them, the husband or the wife, is simply working just to pay for child care, which makes no sense to me whatsoever unless somebody can get benefits and the other can't, and that's what you're, you know, you're working for. But why would you, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Don't you think that the mother or father would do a better job raising their own children than sending them away to some daycare where there's, you know, 20 or 30 other rugrats? somebody who can't discipline them or really give them the type of attention that they need. I and mean, this is just a head scratcher to me, but that's the society that we live in. But are parents going to be quick to send their children back there? Because, you know, I'm familiar with people who send their kids there. And it's like every month they're sick. I'm like, are you sick again? Yeah, my kid caught something. I mean, every single time it's like a cesspool of this stuff. So these are serious questions. Will parents be quick to send their kids back to child daycare services? not knowing how those other kids are treated, what their parents are doing, what they're bringing in there. Will they do it? Serious question. That's a lot of jobs. It's a lot of jobs. And then employment and private education declining 457000 What about these universities? Some of them are already getting sued, right? Room and board, lost tuition, all this stuff. How, many of that's, how much of that's going to get paid out? How many jobs on these campuses are not going to be needed if more schooling goes online? right? This is huge. This is huge. And a lot of this is not being discounted into these markets. In fact, the worse it is, the higher the markets go. Professional and, bu and business services shed 2.1 million jobs in April. Sharp losses occurred in temporary help services down 842,000 and in services to buildings and dwellings down 259,000. In April, employment in retail trade declined by 2.1 million. Job losses occurred in clothing and clothing accessory stores down 740,000. Motor vehicle and parts dealers down 345,000. Miscellaneous store retailers down 264,000. And furniture and home furnishing stores down 209,000. By contrast, the component of general merchandise stores that includes warehouse clubs and super centers gained 93,000 jobs. No surprise there. A lot of your grocery stores, your big box stores, that type of stuff that is servicing food. 
those jobs go there. Uh, of course, you've, I'm sure, are familiar in the news also with Nordstrom's Neiman Marcus, J. Crew filing for bankruptcy. J.C. Penney is once again talking with specialists when it comes to bankruptcy as well. In April, manufacturing employment dropped by 1.3 million. This is manufacturing. About two-thirds of the decline was in durable goods manufacturing, down 914,000, which saw losses in motor vehicles and parts, down 382,000, and in fabricated metal products, down 109,000. Non-durable goods manufacturing shed 416,000 jobs. Employment in the other services industry declined by 1.3 million in April, with nearly two-thirds of the decline occurring in personal and laundry services. So think about, and that is down 797,000. So think about all of those uniform companies. If people aren't working, you're not wearing a uniform. You don't need all of those people to run the trucks around, do the laundry services. Think about your dry cleaners, your local dry cleaner. If people aren't going into the office, they don't have to wear their suits or fancy skirts. Don't need them, okay? This has huge ramifications. Government employment dropped by 980,000 in April. Employment in local government was down by 801,000, in part reflecting school closures. Employment also declined in state government education, down 176,000. Construction employment fell by 975,000 in the month of April, with much of the loss in specialty trade contractors down 691,000. Job losses also occurred in construction of buildings, down 206,000. Now construction, of course, is contingent upon financing, especially for new projects. Will the banks continue to lend? Will the project owners want to continue opening up these projects? Or are they going to see that same amount of demand on the other side of this that justifies opening up that project, whatever it might be? Will they be able to recoup their investment? Or are they going to say, this is a sunk cost, we're done, we're leaving? You also have to take into consideration when it comes to construction in much of this country, you only have several months to get jobs done because of the weather. And even at that, you're sometimes at the mercy of it being uh, rainy, right? If it's raining, you, can you pour concrete? Can you put a roof on? X, Y, Z, right? So you only have a limited time frame to get all of this done and there's only so many workers or so many hours in the day so it's not like you can say we're gonna work double triple shifts here and get everything done it's just not gonna take place employment fell in transportation and warehousing in April down 584 thousand transit and ground passenger transportation and air transportation lost 185 thousand jobs and 141 thousand jobs respectively Wholesale trade shed 363,000 jobs in April, largely, largely reflecting losses in the durable and non-durable goods components. Employment and financial activities fell by 262,000 over the month, with the vast majority of the decline occurring in real estate and rental and leasing down 222,000. Employment and in information fell by 254,000 in the month of April, driven by a decline in motion picture and sound recording industries, down 217,000. Mining lost 46,000 jobs in April, with most of the decline occurring in support activities for mining, down 33,000. In April, average hourly earnings for all employees on private non-farm payrolls increased by $1.34 to $30 and one penny. Average hourly earnings for private sector production and non-supervisory employees increased by $1.04 to $25.12 in the month of April. The increases in average hourly earnings largely reflect the substantial job loss among lower paid workers. So you understand this, you have average and you have median they do not give us the median. That is the middle number. 50% would be below, 50% would be above. They are giving us the average, which can be skewed. So if you slash off a whole bunch of people that are making minimum wage, okay, and those and that's hardest hit, leisure, hospitality, food service, those types of things that we described above, that is going to have a significant effect on average hourly earnings, and it's going to skew it to the higher end. So despite the fact that we have a higher number here, $1.34, which is quite substantial, it's just a statistical number. That's all it is. It's, it's virtually meaningless because this is the average. They should have provided the median with this as well. 
The average work week for all employees on private non-farm payrolls increased by 0.1 hours to 34.2. In the month of April, in the manufacturing sector, the work week declined by 2.1 hours to 38.3 and over declined by 0.9 hours to 2.1 hours. The average work week for production and non-supervisory employees on private non-farm payrolls increased by 0.1 hours to 33.5 hours. The change in total non-farm payroll employment for February was revised down by 45,000 from 275,000 to a plus 230,000. And the change for March was revised down by 169,000 from a loss of 701,000 to a loss of 870,000 jobs. With these revisions, employment changes in February and March combined were 214,000 lower than previously reported. You understand this? These are the corrections for February and March. They overstated those numbers. It was an additional 214,000 that lost jobs. Monthly revisions result from additional reports received from businesses and government agencies since the last updated estimates and from the recalculation of seasonal factors. Here's an additional note from the Bureau of Labor Statistics with this. In the household survey, I'm not reading this in its entirety, in the household survey, individuals are classified as employed, unemployed, or not in the labor force based on their answers to a series of questions about their activities during the survey reference week, April 12th through April 18th. Workers who indicate they were not working during the entire survey reference week and expect to be recalled to their jobs should be classified as unemployed or on temporary layoff. In April, there was an extremely large increase in the number of persons classified as unemployed on temporary layoff. However, there was also a large increase in the number of workers who were classified as employed but absent from work. As was the case in March, special instructions sent to household survey interviewers called for all employed persons absent from work due to coronavirus-related business closures to be classified as unemployed on temporary layoff. However, it is apparent that not all such workers were so classified. If the workers who were recorded as employed but absent from work due to, quote, other reasons over and above the number absent for other reasons in a typical April had been classified as unemployed on temporary layoff, the overall unemployment rate would have been almost five percentage points higher than reported on a not seasonally adjusted basis. However, according to usual practice, the data from the household survey are accepted as recorded. To maintain data integrity, no ad hoc actions are taken to reclassify survey responses. So this is what we have been talking about here, warning this audience, preparing this audience that these numbers were going to be skewed, and there's even an admittance of this by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Because people are not working, but they are still on the payroll, and a lot of this can be due and attributed to those payment protection loans that got out there. And that's what we're saying. So you have a U3 number, headline 14.7, even according to BLS, it should be 5 percentage points high, which would take us to 19.7. Then you take into consideration U6, the broadest measure, 22.8%, right back to depression level numbers. Now, the other interesting thing here, this is just a little bit of math, right? This isn't even taking into consideration the entirety of the monstrosity of the money printing and spending. Of course, we don't have it, right? But I don't care. They don't care. Three trillion, because we know that the Treasury is going to be issuing net, net new issuance, about three trillion dollars over the second quarter alone. All right? So let's just do the math. Three trillion, that's three, with 12 zeros that follow it. And let's divide that number by 33 and a half million because that's how many jobs were lost over the past several weeks. That comes out to $89,500. You get what I'm saying here? Three trillion in this quote-unquote stimulus spending, and that's not all of it, divided by how many jobs were lost, so how many dollars per job? $89,500 per job. That assumes they all come back 100%, which ain't going to happen. 
You understand why I say this is all nonsense? You understand why I say free was never so expensive? We just noted how the vast majority of these jobs were in leisure and hospitality. How many of these people make $89,500? But that's what we just spent trying to save it. Double? Triple? These people make 20000 I mean, depending on what part of the country you're in, they might be making 20, 25000 30, 35. So 89000 rounded up to 90. Two, two and a half, three times as much to save one job? Does that sound logical? Does that sound economical to you? But guess what? You're going to be paying for it. You are going to be paying for it. That's why you cannot do this. You cannot do this. This is just kicking the can further and further down the road. We already know that $3 trillion is equivalent to what the federal government brings in in its entirety in the year. $3 trillion, three and a half. So where are we going to get the growth to pay just for that? That's what debt is, ladies and gentlemen. We talk about it all the time. It is pulling future production and consumption from the future forward to today. So we can get that false sense of a high. But the piper needs paid. And now we are spending $89,500 per job. Per job. And it's going to be worse because that's that's only the drop in the bucket. There's going to be more. That's the $3 trillion from the federal government. What about the two two and a half trillion from the Federal Reserve? And that's going to keep going. They're not done with that either. What happens if there's a phase four, phase five, phase six? And something else will come. I mean, they can play hardball all they want on there. Well, we're not in any rush to do phase four, phase five. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Just sit back and watch what happens. It'll be more. And this is what we know. This is what we know. This is what they at least tell us. There's, God only knows how much more money they're moving around. Where, we don't know because they're not going to tell us. Federal Reserve's not going to tell us. They'll hide behind bank secrecy laws. They'll just give us the double middle finger to begin with. And then the president... There's no accountability whatsoever. I'm going to fire the inspector general, and he did. I'm not going to tell you what we're doing with all this money. It's our money. Nope, yeah, not going to tell you what we're doing with it. System of checks and balances. It's gone. It's shot. Banana Republic is here. Front and center. Financial economic coup d'etat. It's over. Leave the Republican Party. Leave the Democratic Party. Do it immediately. I don't care what you sign up for. Libertarian, green, independent, Constitution, unaffiliated Mickey Mouse Club, I don't care. Leave them. They are a joke. None of this makes sense. And everybody else, you know, all these other stupid little stories they want to float out there to distract you. That's all it is. It's a distraction to put you in your respective silo. Forget that they are operating a banana republic. Forget that they are basically stealing our civil rights from us with all of this stupid social distancing, mask wearing, and God only knows what they're going to implement when things are opened up again. I mean, this is the Gestapo, coupled with the Banana Republic. The worst of every world possible, and not so much a whimper or an outcry from most of anybody. But this is an historic jobs report. I know a lot of the numbers I read it, you know, pretty quickly. But that's why I said you can find it on bls.gov. But I wanted to read this because it is history in the making. And if next month is, ju is just as bad, then we're going to read that one in its entirety as well. Because you have to understand these numbers. We have not seen these time types of numbers, some of them ever. It is literally history in the making. And some of them you got to go all the way back to World War II or the Great Depression. Okay? It is Friday. Do your best to enjoy your weekend. If there's some sort of breaking news, I'll be on here uh, Saturday or Sunday with a uh, week ahead segment. If not, you'll catch me here next week. Again, enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe, get the word out, leave your comments. We do love hearing from you. Stay diversified, stay vigilant, and stay with the Capital News. I am Alex Caritas. Godspeed.